Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Father God, we praise you. Father God, we worship you. Father God, we acknowledge you. Blessed Trinity, perfect union. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. We praise you this morning, oh God, and we just give you thanks. We give you thanks for who you are, for what you've done, for who, what you did for us, for creating us, for fashion us for saving us, God, when we were in the cesspool of sin, for loving us, for never leaving us, or forsaking us, God. We worship you and we acknowledge your goodness. We acknowledge your faithfulness. We acknowledge, oh God, that we are nothing with, without you, oh God. We cannot do anything if you're not the one who is leading us. So God, even now I surrender, God to you, my sovereign God and King. And God, I pray, Lord, that your word, God, will go forth, oh God, that the hearts of your people will be blessed, that their eyes will be opened, oh God, to your word, my God, let there be no hindrances, oh God, let your word find good ground, God, that we may bear fruit, oh God, for the glory of your kingdom. We give you praise and we give you glory, oh God. We thank you, Jesus, because without you, none of this would be possible. We thank you, Holy Spirit, because without you, we cannot be here. So we praise you and we worship you and we thank you, oh God. And have your way in this place, oh God. Let your will be done, oh God, and let the hearts of your people be blessed. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The spoken word this morning is there is power in unity. Power in unity. And Psalm 133 says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Unity brings blessing. Unity is, when we look at unity, is when we come together and we agree. We hear, we believe and we align. And as children of God, we have to be unified. And there's a scripture that Jesus said in Matthew 18, 19 to 20. He said, again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of it. And as I was looking into unity, we already know in the natural that if you're not unified on things, there's going to be confusion. There's going to be destruction. You can't meet your goals. If you're working and the, 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 the company is divided, you're not going to meet your goals. If a family is divided, you're not going to meet your goals because Jesus Christ said a kingdom divided can never stand. So unity is important, and as believers, we have to be unified because it is through our unity that God can do his work. God cannot do his work in a divided people because Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are unified, and we ourselves have to be unified. And there's a word that Jesus did in, in John 17 when he was praying for himself. This is before he got crucified and he prayed for himself and he prayed for the apostles. Then he prayed for the believers. And I wanna read a couple lines in John 17 what Jesus said. He said, I do not pray for these only, but I also pray for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent 
sent me and the glory which you have given me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me that they may be made perfect in you and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Jesus said, we in him, he in us, and then God in him. So when I was meditating on this, God magnified it to me that unity starts with us unifying ourselves with God. That is where it starts. We can't be unified with anybody if we are not unified with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's where it starts. It starts with us. Faith comes by hearing. So when we hear the word of God and we hear what God's word says, we, when we hear it, we ought to believe it. Jesus says, without faith, it's impossible to believe God for those who come to God must first believe that he is God. So when we hear the word of God, we're going to believe the word of God and then we're going to align with the word of God. And God, Jesus says it in John 15. He says, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So it starts, unity starts first with the believer who unites themselves with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, walking according to what the Word of God says. We acknowledge what Jesus Christ did. We believe it and we receive it and now we're going to do as Jesus says. This is why every time Jesus preached and he taught, what does he always say? He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. What was Jesus saying? Because you can hear and you don't listen. You can hear and you don't believe. You can hear and you don't abide. And if you don't abide in God, there cannot be any unity. Because we have to be in unity with what the word of God says first. When Jesus says, when two or three are gathered in my name and touch and agree on anything, he said it will be done. So let's, let's break it down. If Jesus is in me and the Father is in Jesus and they're all in me and I come together now with Pastor Vickers and Jesus is in her, and that is, that is what God expects, that we all, because we're unified with God individually, when we get together collectively, my God, I want you to understand the power in unity when you're unified in God. When God is in me, and God is in you, and we're all in unity with God, and when we come together as brethren in God, and we touch and agree on anything, what do you think is going to happen? Why do you think Jesus Christ said he's going to show up? Because we're bringing him with us, because he's already in us. And that's where it starts. It starts with us. We have to take this walk of salvation seriously. This is where unity starts. Unity starts with me. If the body of Jesus Christ is supposed to move forward, it starts with me. If we're going to have an impact in this world, it starts with me. We can't be unified if we ourselves aren't unified. If we don't believe the word of God, if we don't obey the word of God, if we don't walk according to the, the word of God, we cannot be unified. We're going to be divided. That is the word of God. So we have to, it starts with us. And if we are unified, the devil can't touch us. That's the bottom line. A people who are unified, no matter how many arrows the devil sent, they're going to just bounce back because we know who we are in Christ individually and collectively. A people cannot be unified collectively if they don't know who they are individually. And that's the problem. That's the problem. We don't want to take the time to be unified with the Father and the Son and the Spirit. Do you know what that is to for, for Jesus to say, I in you. 
That's what Jesus said. He's going to be in us. And we know that through his Holy Spirit. And then God is in Jesus. And they're all dwelling, my God, in human containers. What power is inside of us. But we have to align ourselves with God. We have to surrender to God. So that that power that God wants to unleash in us and through us. So that we can impact the world can be done. But we have to do the work. We have to surrender. It's not it's not magic. That's what the occults do. That's magic. In the kingdom of God, it is surrender. It is obedience. It is faith. That's how we get to walk in unity. Jesus Christ demonstrated that because Jesus was God, but yet he came as son and he did not step out of the will of his father. Whatever the father said, he did it so that the father could be glorified with the son. Oh my God, they were working in unison all the way to the cross so that we can live. So then what are we doing? We got to do it. We got to do it, saints of God. We have to get to know God for ourselves. We got to spend that time in the presence of God, that sanctification process, that consecration process. We have to allow the spirit of God to dwell in us, my God, and to refine us by fire so that when we come forth, as Pastor Vicker said this morning under the anointing power of God, we'll be this fire brand because we allow God to do the work. So when this fire brand comes together with another fire brand, the kingdom of darkness will be destroyed. Yeah. My God, my God, my God, you church of Jesus Christ, you have to understand who we are. We got to be sick and tired of the devil and what he's doing in the church. He has come to rage war on the church. The early church was a church that was a firebrand. The early church, those apostles, those people, when you're reading Acts, when you're reading the books of, book, book of Acts, when Jesus told them, and you can go to Acts chapter 1, he said, I am going back to the Father. But he said, I want you to tarry in Jerusalem for the promise. Wait for the Holy Spirit. Because when power comes, you'll be able to go forth and spread the gospel to all nations. And those men, men heard, men and women, they heard what Jesus said. And they believed what Jesus said. And they waited on the promise. And the word of God said in Acts 2, and when the day of Pentecost has come, they were all in one accord because individually they knew God and they believed in Jesus Christ. And collectively they were waiting for the promise. And the word of God said that the day of Pentecost came and they said tongues of fire fell on all of them and they began to speak in tongues of other nations. That the people around them said, oh my God, what is going on? What is this? They could understand them testifying about Jesus. And the word of God said when Peter stood up with boldness and he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ, over 3,000 people gave their life in that day. It is the same spirit that was operating in the early church that is available in today's church. But it's for us to submit to God so that his spirit can do the work through us. It begins with us. It begins with us. The gospel of Jesus Christ is supposed to expel darkness. Darkness should not be gaining territory on this earth. The gospel has the power through the people who believe what has been accomplished for us. How is the devil gaining territory? I researched it. I'm telling you. The devil is alive. Do you know there is over 400 and 59,000 denominations in Christianity. 459,000 denominations in one faith. And then I check Islam. Islam only had two major sects. I check Hinduism, they only had four, and Buddhism only had two. And we know that they're error. But the one who's supposed to have 
have the truth. Had 459,000 denominations. The devil is a liar. And that is the work that he's doing. Because people don't want to get to know God according to his word. People don't want to submit to God so that the spirit of God can do the work. There's one spirit and one body and one Lord of all. There are no different denominations. If you go to 1 Corinthians 3, Brother Paul talked about it. And I got to touch that word. Because what the devil is doing in the church is terrible. And it's time for us as believers, true believers of God, to rise up at our place and expel these workers of darkness. Because we have the power through Jesus Christ. Jesus said on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell can never prevail against it. But we as believers have to rise up to the place that Jesus Christ has called us to be. I'm going to go to the word of God in 1 Corinthians 3 and I'm going to read what brother Paul says. The devil is a liar. He has turned this message. And those apostles knew from that time. And they put messages in the word of God to the church. Brother Paul says, and I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as to carnal. Spiritually immature. Is when you're carnal. He said, I fed you with milk and with not and not with solid food, for until now you are not able to receive it. Because he says, For when there are envy and strife and divisions, and you know that's what's going on in the church. We are the church, but religion and tradition has divided the church. We're supposed to be together, being able to make moves for God. But instead, I am Baptist, I am Catholic, I am this, I am that. Listen to what Brother Paul says. He says, for, who's, for when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos. Are you not carnal? He said, who then is Paul? And who then is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believe as the Lord gave to each one. I planted Apollos water. But God gave the increase. So when you hear people saying, I'm Baptist, I'm Catholic, I'm Methodist, I'm Calvinist, there's so many. What does that have to do with anything? Paul further said that the only foundation in 1 Corinthians 3, level 4, no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And that is the message. We are one in the body of Jesus Christ. The only foundation that was laid is Jesus Christ because he paid the price for the church. But you see, Jesus Christ talked about it with the wheat and the tear. He said, I sow my good seed. And when men slept, that the devil came in and he sowed in his tears among them. And that's what the devil did. He sowed in religion and tradition and has confused the masses. People will fight. Stop talking to people yeah. over tradition and nonsense. Yeah. Guess what the problem with that is? <laughs> tradition and religion is man-made. <laughs> There's no power in that. And the devil can have fun all day long. You can, There's no power in religion and tradition. There is power in the cross. There's power in Jesus Christ. There's power in the gospel. And this is why the early church was so effective. Because they understood the message. They knew what they had to do. They were all submitted and committed to what Jesus Christ entrusted to them. And he entrusted the same thing to us. He entrusted the same thing to us. Let me tell you something about the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word of God attests in Acts 8 that there was a man, his name was Simon the Sorcerer. And the word of God said this man bewitched the people in Samaria. They thought that he was somebody that he was not. And the word of God said when Philip came on the scene and start testifying about Jesus Christ, that everyone who heard the truth rejected the lie that that Simon the sorcerer was telling them and they came into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. 
That is what the gospel of Jesus Christ is supposed to be doing when people are walking according to the spirit and the dictates according to God's word. People's lives are supposed to be changed. Wolves that are hiding in sheep, sheep garments should be exposed because the power that is coming through you, when you show up, darkness has to flee. That is the power. That's why it was so radical what was going on in the early church because everywhere they showed up changed the place. Because they were unified individually and collectively. Everything you read, they were in one heart, one mind. They had all things in common. The Spirit of God was able to move freely. There was no resistance. There was nothing blocking. Because you have to understand that God cannot move in a divided church the way he's supposed to move. You have to understand that. And I'm not making it up. If you go to Mark 6, and I'm going to touch on that a little bit. When Jesus walked the earth, and I'm going to touch on it. I want you to, and Jesus is God. Remember this. And I'm going to show you the importance of unity. Mark 6, listen to the, what the word of God says. It says, then he went, Jesus went back to his hometown, right? And he preached in the synagogue. And because this is hometown, they're looking at Jesus as the carpenter's son. And they're looking at Jesus as Mary's son. Who is he? And they're, that sound like people with traditions and their own ideologies. And they can miss a move of God because they're so locked into what they believe. That is what tradition and religion does to a person. You can miss the move of God because you're so focused on who you think this person is instead of who God is using them to be, right? So he went there and they weren't listening. Listen to what Jesus says in verse four. But they were offended because of how Jesus was talking and what he was doing. Because they're looking at Jesus as, we know you. We saw you when you were a little boy. Who are you now to become talking in the synagogue and doing all this? They were missing the work of God. And that is what religion and tradition does. They put God in a box. And if God don't operate in this box, if you don't operate in the box that they created, then you're not, you're not a part of them. That's the devil's work. Because God can do whatever he pleases with whoever he pleases because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. The word of God says what Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country. And listen to what the word of God says among his own relatives and his own house. Now he could do no mighty works there. We're talking about Jesus here. Jesus is saying, because of these people's unbelief, because to be unified, you have to believe. Because of their unbelief and not believing in who he was and who God sent him to be and to accomplish, the word of God said, Jesus himself said, he could not do any mighty works there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled. Because of their unbelief. Jesus. So if Jesus. The king of kings. Let's get it straight. Who is God in the flesh. Couldn't do the mighty works. Because there was division among him. What is that telling us now? That the spirit of God. Can't do what he's supposed to do. If all the believers are not aligned. In the word of God. And the work of God. And the commission that Jesus Christ has set for us. The spirit can't do it. He's going to be blocked. Because of division. And the devil knows this. This is why there's 459,000 denominations worldwide because if these 459,000 